This is the 19th video in this series and I'm going to demonstrate about the easiest way to get our guy into motion on a scene. And first thing what I need to do is determine my stride length. So to do that, I set my cursor down at his foot. I'm just going to grab the model and move until the other foot is in that location. So I'll grab him up along Y and just place his foot in around that location. And I'll watch the numbers down here to determine my stride length. So I figure that a f one half of his stride is around 7.6. So if I was to use my calculator and take that number, 7.6, and divide it by 2, I would be able to calculate 3.8 as being my quarter stride. So I'm going to take my rigging into pose mode. Use the up arrow key to go up by 10 frames. And at 10 frames, I should be going forward by the 3.8. So I'll grab the master bone along the Y axis and move it by minus 3.8. And this will set my, my fellow into motion. And I'll set a location keyframe for that. And then I'll go up another 10 frames. And the guy will bounce back to where he was. So I'll grab him along Y. And this time move him by minus 7.6. And set a keyframe of location. And that keyframe is getting set only for the master bone here. Because it was the one determining the up and down location of the rigging. So I'll key forward to frame 31 and call up my calculator. So I have 3.8 times 3 equals 11.4. So I'll grab them along Y by minus 11.4 and set a keyframe for that. And call up my calculator and 3.8 times Four equals 15.2. So I'll go up to 41 and grab him along Y by minus 15.2 and set a keyframe. Now I'll come over into the action editor and select all of the bones. So I put my arrow over top of the bones to do that and go into extend mode and instead of cyclic this time we're going to use cyclic extrapolation so I'll just call up my scene here and get all my components into view I'll skip the camera though and go into a solid mode so we can see things better deselect everything so it looks a little more normal moving my rigging around into a different layer might be good too and we'll have a look at what we get out of that. And it's a little bit small. But from defining that motion better um, to where the master bone is actually moving through blender space and setting the cyclic inter... setting the key to cyclic interpolation rather than just cyclic, the model will now walk and continue walking across and I'm sure looking at that my model looks pretty straight legged and everything but that's really just the rigging and I'd be wise to move that to a different layer at this point so that we're not actually looking at that and that way our model would look a little more normal and this is about the most basic and Mickey Mouse way that I could set up an animation to utilize that walk cycle and there's better ways and better riggings for that matter and I probably have a couple minutes left here so I'm going to quickly poke onto a web page and I'll find it via Google search what we want to look for is walk cycle modifiers and Google searching that will turn up uh, web page at blender.org for walk cycle modifiers um, on this page there's some information and 
this stuff is way more advanced than my rigging and the information I've provided. Um, it's applicable to 2.43 and I don't know, I haven't been able to find one for 2.48 which is what I'm working in. And It has a number of blend files which demonstrate the process that they're talking about and to be really honest I can't make heads or tails of these blend files and I'm a little bit disappointed that they chose to include a blend file that is is um, perhaps a little too advanced for for uh, newer members of the blender community to uh, be able to make heads or tails of and to be honest, I think that they should have included some more basic blends as well with with what could be perhaps uh, more useful information. And it does an absolutely fantastic walk cycle and, you know, but, well, even just the fact that they included the guy tripping and stuff. I'm, it's a little beyond me why they um, decided to use such an advanced blend to demonstrate this particular function in Blender and why they didn't include something at a more basic level. I'm a little baffled by that. And then there's a sec second blend and this again is another super advanced kind of thing and it's beyond me how it works. I can't make, make heads or tails of it. But in this blend the character actually walks along uh, a three-dimensional space which I'm sure going over this blend until I do figure it out is going to prove extremely worthwhile. But I do rather wish that they would have elected to also place uh, something at a more basic level of information to, to help one to actually start setting something like this up and start using these new modifiers. So you'd find that with a quick web search for walk cycle modifiers and it's on blender.org. Well, before I sign off on this tutorial series, um, I'm going to demonstrate one final thing with this rigging and it has to do with the choice of bones that I used as my manipulation bones where I chose the longer scaling and rotating bones to manipulate my whole model. And I like to demonstrate that we did also have an option in that choice. And the option was to, instead of use the large scaling bone as our manipulator, we could have also used the IK bone and hidden all the other bones in the leg. So we would hide these three bones and retain the, the IK bone instead. And I'll call it my model and just show how that would have worked and with the IK bone rather than scaling and rotating it could have been used as a simple grab bone and this is also an extremely easy way to pose a model and according to the documentation um, that I just steered you towards um, this is actually the more preferred method and and seems to be the method that would apply to using that stride bone and constraining the walk cycle along paths and such. So I'm, I'm going to be looking at that further and how to design these uh, more grabbing type of bones for my models and try to apply a more advanced rigging to my next project. And the, ne the next project is going to be a flesh model export from, from Make Human. So hopefully I'll get on those videos pretty soon, and until then, happy modeling.